As I move into the goal of making more complex and longer form animations, keep in mind that can mean anything, I decided to focus my efforts on two specific animation ideas that I've had in my head for well over a year, one of which you've already seen a couple of glimpses of. In fact, I already animated what you can think of as the opening sequence to one of them. That one was my character Laura stepping onto her hoverboard, and that entire idea was inspired by an illustration that I did in 2023 with Laura and her dad Mac flying through the air to celebrate her birthday and one of the best birthday presents she'd ever gotten. On the flip side of all that, around the same time when I finished that illustration, I finished up a more episodic story involving her sister Alice. This story followed Alice and Laura looking for a magic shop on the lower side of Manhattan before we follow Alice into a magic shop which then turns into a library labyrinth. Or labyrinth library. I should have rephrased that in this script. That's an interesting way to put it. I don't know why I wrote it like that. Maybe I should say labyrinth library. Whatever. Whichever one works. Anyway, I'm getting off track. Today, we're going to follow the path of that second animation idea. I decided to spend way too much time stacking up a library model that I was able to find, cramming it with as many lights as I possibly could to make it less dark and less eerie, even though dark and eerie was one of the moves that I was looking for. Then I tossed my new model of Alice along with an orc model that I found that immediately became my best friend and proceeded to completely destroy the library that I spent so much time working on. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a little series I like to call the Blender Discourse Course. A little series where we destroy 50,000 books just to make a cool animation trailer for our cinema reel. A cinema reel in which may or may not actually come to fruition. If you're new to the channel or to the series, feel free to hit that like button right next to the subscribe button and make sure you leave a comment on what your favorite book is. We got 50,000 of them, so I'm pretty sure in this library you're going to find your favorite book. Honestly, as I started on this entire project, it veered off into a couple of different directions. Initially, I wanted to showcase my character Alice and her power set, but then I kept thinking about how I wanted to work on longer form animations, and then that brought me back to the story that I had already written for the character. That led me right back to the drawing board, and here we are. After I got this model, I knew what I wanted to do with the library, but I didn't have a library model and environment to use, so... Luckily, I was able to get one on one of my favorite websites. I did my best to actually get as much information and as much footage of me building this library as I could. I ended up doing so many small details that you were probably never going to see just because I loved how uh, mm, immaculately detailed the entire environment was. I kept building up and building up and building it up. But uh, after I realized that, and you can definitely see it on the side right now, especially on um, you can see me almost infinitely scrolling about 50,000 books. Well, at the time, I think it was about 40,000. The reason why is because each library stage had two floors. Those two floors were a lot. Um, those two floors had about 8,000 books a piece. And then I kept doubling the entire uh, library frame, not frame, the entire library scene. And then I kept uh, adding more stuff. And every time I added more stuff, everything got duplicated, even including all 8,000 books. So uh, yeah, not something that I recommend if you don't have a strong enough computer, which my computer was actually absolutely just screaming at me every time I moved my camera around in order to get Alice to be positioned like this. I initially wanted to do an entire test in the library just to see how well I could actually light the entire library as well as the environment. Luckily, the library came with plenty of lights. It came with a set of lights that uh, mimicked moonlight and the starlight coming from outside the world into the actual library. I love those the most, so I decided to play with that a little bit more. Um, you don't really see most of that in the video because I kind of cut most of that out. But eventually I got around to actually posing Alice the way I wanted to, and then I realized I could do some extra stuff in the meantime while I was waiting on certain props to load up and render. So I kept messing around with focus, messing around with cameras, and just getting some of the most cinematic shots that I definitely could. When I tell you the cinematic shots came out very good, uh, that's all I can really say. You've probably seen some of them on all of my social medias before, but I just really liked how some of these shots came out. But then the uh, animation challenge came in. This was more or less the exact time when I realized, hey, I kind of want to do some cool animation. You'll see it at the end, but this was probably one of the more complicated animations that I had done uh, for a camera that's on rails. I did a video about how to make a character turn around with just the character actually turning around. But initially I wanted to actually uh, have the camera turn around the character and not the character just turn around in front of a camera. Well, today I get to do that. This is definitely something I have to remind myself to try out later on in the future. But this was a good project to practice actually setting up the camera track to actually run the camera on and then have the camera just 
go straight down the entire track like it's supposed to. I've done it a couple of times before in the past, but this one was the first time where I really wanted to commit to the actual character turnaround section. And on top of that, uh, the ogre, ogre, the orc was just uh, waiting for me patiently to actually uh, get to the second part of this entire project which we get to, but unfortunately, I am still rendering all of the animations that I am working on right now for this entire sequence. So as per usual in this series of videos, we're probably gonna do a part two to this at some point. But complicated swirly swirls aside, getting this camera set up the way I wanted it to be was uh, a bit of a trick because the focus was not where it needed to be and the focus could not be changed the way that I wanted it to be changed. That was until like the next week I realized, oh, I can just change the focus by keyframing the focus on the camera. Didn't realize that that was the case, but I didn't care too much because having the character spin around like this looked pretty good. And I was pretty satisfied with that. I'm kind of glad that I didn't have to work on the focus of the camera because I definitely was all over the place when it came to trying to figure out how to animate the facial expressions for each model. I figured it out a while ago, but at the time, I couldn't find it and I didn't want to keep recording for too long. So I kind of just skipped animating her face for the moment and I decided to animate the glowing orbs for her. They're supposed to be plasma orbs, but they ended up looking like glass balls. I was all right with it in the end, but yeah. Working on those took a lot more time than I thought because I had to make a separated path for all of them because animating them the way I did did not let me actually do that. Every time I would copy and paste the orb to move it into another area and try to like cheat, I couldn't do that. I had to actually animate all the orbs individually and have them in their own little animation path, which, you know, that makes sense, right? But you don't want to do that when you have a character who can make a near infinite amount of these types of uh, materials. So you could easily cheat by just redoing it. But no, I had to go the hard way and just uh, do everything myself. I was all right with that. That concludes this little section right here. Had a good time with it. Also, this is the time where I realized, oh, while I'm animating everything and moving the camera around, uh, I'm lagging a lot. How can I fix that? How about turn off all 4,000 books that I have on this level? And how about turn down the other 10,000 books that I have above this uh, level? So uh, yeah, I kind of did that. That leads us into this next section, which is actually the establishing shot for the Alice animation that I was really working on. I'll show you a lot more of it at the end, but I really just wanted to show off some of this uh, beginning portion. So the main part of this entire animation that you're seeing me work on here is that she is supposed to be arriving into the library from a portal that she conjured. The portal just happens to be uh, square shaped. I kind of wanted it to be oval shaped, but then I realized it would kind of look more dynamic and it would look a little cooler if it were to be a square. So I decided, huh, why not do that? Because why not? Putting together the textures for the square portal was easy enough, but then I had to get into the walk cycle, which um, you're gonna find out really quickly that I skipped. I skipped the walk cycle animation because I didn't even wanna feel like just thinking about the walk cycle. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you practice your walk cycles, just not with me. <laughs> I realized it kind of makes sense for her to float too, because she does use her hands to uh, fly around and hover around a little bit more. So that makes sense as well. But again, like I said, I cheated and I didn't want to animate her walking. So that's what we ended up doing here. Also with this footage being sped up, it's actually a lot easier for you to see how in the uh, viewport, the animation was gonna look. I like that. I actually ended up getting about two shots ready to go. So this is the second shot of her entering the more greater part of the library that we're gonna actually uh, encounter everything with. She comes into this part of the library and then she gets her book and all that good stuff. Like I said, you'll see all this a little later, but then she is encountered with, well, she encounters the uh, guardian, AKA the bookkeeper. I, I like to call them all the, all the types of names. So overall, I had a really good time with this entire animation and I'm glad as to how everything came out. This was probably one of the more longer form animation projects that I actually had worked on in a while. And that is saying something because I did something like this earlier over the summer. This is kind of one of my bigger goals for the next few months. So I need to start practicing early and getting these stuff done early so that I can be on time for all the goals. So with that being said, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you were inspired to do a little bit of animating yourself. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Tell me which animation you like the best. At this point, I'm kind of torn between the character turnaround and both of the shots of the book. I think the dolly zoom effect that I got in the first one was pretty good too. So with all that being said, feel free to check out the rest of the Blender Discourse Course playlist on the screen now, and I will catch you all later.